Hey everyone, this is a visual guide for the Disciples of Land Splendorous Tools quests and upgrades for patch 6.35. If you have completed the Sky Steel Relic Tools, then you already have a pretty good idea of what to expect. This first set of quests and upgrades are way easier than the Sky Steel Tools, but that's just my opinion. First, in order to unlock these tools and the quests to upgrade them, players must complete the quest An Original Improvement, located in the Crystarium at X7Y11, from the NPC Cora Zoe. Players must first complete the main scenario quest Endwalker, unlock Crystarium Deliveries via completing the quest The Crystalline Mean, and gain access to the Boutique of Splendors by speaking with Moen in Yulmore in order to accept this quest. Your first tool is given to to you after completing the quest. Other classes tools may be purchased from the NPC Quinana stationed right next to Korra and Grenalt. This will unlock both Disciples of Land and Hand tools, so if you did it as a crafter or a gatherer, it's unlocked for both. Again, this guide will cover the Disciples of Land or Gatherer tools. I'll do Miner and Botanist first and have Fisher after those two. I will provide timestamps below. I did some experimenting with the gear and stats and found that the required gathering for this first quest to get 100% gather rate is 2800 gathering. Perception is a mystery as the HQ strikes or gatherer's boon effect starts at 1% regardless. I went fully naked with just a tool and still had a 1% chance. Once you have your starter tool, you may accept the quest, a dedicated tool, from Cora Zoe. The quest requires you to obtain 180 Splendorous Miners components and 180 Splendorous Water Shards. The Miners components can be obtained by turning in Connoisseur's Primstone with a collectability of 570 to 1000. To the NPC Quinana, who is next to Cora and Grinalt. The goal is to collect only at 1000 collectability. 570 to 999 collectability will reward you with only one component. While while a collectability of 1000 will reward 3 components. Since we need 180 components, we will need 60 Connoisseur's Primstone at 1000. Any less and we'll need 180 Connoisseur's Primstones. The Splendorous Water Shards we just need to gather. The Botanist quest will mirror the Miner's quest, the difference is simply the items you gather. Instead of Connoisseur's Primstone and Splendorous Water Shards, it's Connoisseur's Waddle Petrobark and Splendorous Earth Shard. The same idea though. To find where to gather these items, open up your gathering log, switch over to Special, Open the drop-down labeled Side Quests and select Splendorous Tools. The items and their location will be displayed here. If we click on the Connoisseur's Primstone and Splendorous Water Shards, you can see that they are located in the same place. We'll just click on the location from here and select the nearest Aetherite to teleport to. Lucky us! Both the Splendorous Water Shard and the Connoisseur's Primstone are located in the same place, in the same gathering nodes. Same goes for the Botanist items. The difference is the Water and Earth Shards are hidden, so they will not always show up in the node. Both items require you to have the Splendorous tool equipped in order to even attempt to gather them. Now for the strategy. I tested this with some unmelded item level 590 script gear and 80% of the time it worked every time. I was able to consistently and quickly complete this step with the old pact maker gear. Here's a snapshot of it with my melds minus the main tool as you have to use the relic tool. So the collectible rotation is the same as it's been since probably pre-Shadowbringers, but we'll go over it again. Scrutiny, Meticulous Prospector or Woodsman, Scrutiny, Meticulous, Scour, Solid Reason or Ageless Word, if proc wise to the world, and then collect the rest of it. If you get some procs along the rotation, you can end with another Meticulous for a chance to save a gathering attempt. That is the rotation to guarantee you get some 1000 collectability items for turn-ins. Now, as for the shards, because those are hidden, they are the priority. If you don't have 180 shards and you open a node with shards, just gather those up. I did not use any abilities to gather more, I simply gathered them. Whether or not you use GP to gather the shards is up to you, but I saved my GP for the collectible rotation. If you are out of GP and your cordial is on cooldown, you can just meticulous the collectible item and hope you get lucky. I got about 5 to 10 from getting lucky, or you can go node to node looking for shards while you wait for GP and cordials. A special tip, you can gather the items required for both botanist and miner without actually having the quest accepted as either. You only need the tool equipped. Once you know what the requirements are for the stage you are on, you can get everything for both classes, if both tools are on the same step. You can also have both a dedicated tool and an adaptive tool quest accepted for two different classes at the same time. Once you have all the required items, unequip your tool and hand in the quest. After completing the first quest, you can immediately accept a second quest for that tool. The second quest is called an adaptive tool, and it plays the exact same as the previous quest. This time, you need to gather a few extra than before. The same idea though. 
The required gathering to reach 100% gather rate is 3100 gathering. Perception is acting the same as the other nodes, it's 1% regardless for the gatherer's boon effect. Perception only helps with the crystals as HQ strikes yield more items per strike. With my gear, I sit at about 32% boon. Again, to find where to gather these items, open up your gathering log, switch over to special, open the drop down labeled side quests, and select splendorous tools. The items and their location will be displayed here. The strategy is the exact same as the previous step. Crystals are priority when they appear till you have 210. Shoot for only collecting the connoisseur's items at 1000 collectability. At 1000 collectability, you will need to collect 70 connoisseur's items to reach 210 components. As before, the components are obtained from Quinana by trading the connoisseur's items to them. Once you have all the required items, unequip the tool and hand in the quest. Congratulations on obtaining your new glowy tools. There's one more thing to go over, but before we do that, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a like, it really helps. Also, share this with a friend you think might gain from this video. Leave a comment or share your own tips with the community in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep up to date with all my future content. Okay, back to the video. Now for the Fisher tool. The quest's name are the same and accepted from the same NPC, but the requirements differ just a little. You do need to fish up two different items like the other gatherers, but with Fisher, both items need to be collectibles. Also, you not only need to use the tool, but also a special bait called Select Bait Ball. This bait can be purchased from Quinana from the White Gatherer Scripts Exchange under the Others tab. Unlike the Sky Steel tools, the bait for this costs scripts, not gill. I recommend buying about 300 bait. You may need more. The first quest, a dedicated tool, requires you to obtain only 60 of two different items. Splendorous Fishing Rod Components and Splendorous Fishing Reel Components. Both items are obtained from Quinana. The rod components can be obtained by trading Platinum Seahorse at a collectability of 47 to 110. 47 to 109 rewards one component and 110 plus rewards two components. The reel components are offered for Clave Keepers at a collectability of 283 to 665. 283 to 664 rewards 1 and 665 plus rewards 2. Now the strategy. Unlike Miner and Botanist, we are going to take and keep any and all of the fish we catch. Seeing as we will get either one or two components, it's worth turning it all in. Starting with the Platinum Seahorse, where to catch these is in the description of the fish itself. It reads, Beneath the surface of the source. We're from the source, but that's not the source it's talking about. The source in Lakeland is where we will find the seahorse. The strategy for catching this fish with little to no bait loss is easy. First, make sure you have collect on. Make a cast macro for seven seconds. This is mine. The seahorse is a single exclamation mark and it happens fast, within 8 seconds of using the macro. Anything after that is not it. So when your macro chimes at 7 seconds, use hook to reel in your line and save the bait. And repeat the process. You may end up catching some hard candy, they seem to have an overlapping time with the seahorse. If you have spare GP, I would use surface slap if they are being annoying. Once you catch a seahorse, use identical cast and then prize catch. The next one will be equal or more than 110 collectability. Be sure to use your stacks of angler's art on Thaliac's favor and use cordials as needed. A pro tip here, as I was finishing up with the seahorse, I learned it is literally the first fish to land within a 7 second window, meaning you can just use prize catch and a 7 second macro. As soon as the macro chimes, you reel in. Prize catch will persist if you don't catch a fish. This way, every seahorse you catch will be max collectability, while saving the 350 GP every other catch. This will also save bait because you reel in before the other fish have a chance to bite. The second fish for step one is the Clave Keeper. Same as the seahorse, the location is in the description. It reads, patrols an area stretching from the Seagazer Shoals to the coast of the Clave. It took me a second to find this location, but it's in Kulusia, south of right. On the map, south of right, you will find a pin labeled Seagazer. You need to fish into the shoal. I had to Google what a shoal is, and based on what I found, this is not a shoal. But anyway, you can fish from the bridge nearby, but you need to face into this little area. If you are facing east on the bridge, it counts as the western coast. The strategy is largely the same as the other fish, but this fish has a timer up to 14 seconds and is a double exclamation mark hook. The biggest issue with this one is that the Coulissean Flounder and Cod are a single exclamation mark hook that land within the timer of the fish we are after. The Cod also overlaps by a second or two on the tail end of the Clave Keeper's timer. Using Surface Slap when you have spare GP is advised. You can use surface slap on a flounder or a cod and wait for roughly 550 GP so you can use identical cast and prize catch. 
It will take longer, but you will waste much less bait. Whether you hook the flounder or let it go, it will take your bait. Also, if you pull the line in with surface slap active and no fish hooked, surface slap will persist. You can also do nothing and let the hooked fish take off with your bait during surface slap. Surface slap will persist through that as well. I recommend using either an 11 or 12 second timer and surface slap the flounders and cods. Once you have turned in the fish and have obtained all 120 items, unequip the tool and turn in the quest. As with the other tools, you can immediately accept the next quest from Korra. Once again, we need to use the Augmented Splendorous tool and the Select Bait Balls. This time around, you need 80 of each item. So just like Miner and Botanist, the quest is the same, just more gathering. The Adaptive Fishing Rod component can be traded for the Mirror Image Fish with the collectability of 9 to 21. The Adaptive Fishing Reel component can be traded for Spangled Piraruchu with a collectability of 425 to 998. Also, as before, the location of the fish is located in the description of the fish. Starting with the mirror image fish, it reads, Legend has it that after being reflected in the waters of Hand Mirror Lake, the patterns of a princess's dress, yada yada yada. The name of the lake is Hand Mirror and they mention royalty. To Ilmeg! Handmere Lake is located to the northwest of Lita Laran. The timer for the mirror image is the same as the seahorse, 7 seconds. It is also a single exclamation mark hook. Everything I said about the seahorse, apply it to this fish and you're golden. The second fish for this step is the spangled Piraruchu. It reads, This wavekin has been called the living treasure of Lake Tusi Mekta. That sounds like the Rock Tika Great Wood to me. Lake Tusi Mekta is directly west of Slitherbow. This is a fun fishing spot as the branches and roots offer a plethora of places to set up. This is a double exclamation mark hook. The timer for this fish went up to 20 seconds on a few of my casts. It also never hooked before 10 seconds. I only ran into the yellow papira and claw boy which are single exclamation mark hooks inside of the 20 second timer. The yellow papira were appearing pretty early on in the cast, I would say before 12 seconds. The claw boys were in the later half, like 10 plus Plus seconds. As with the first double exclamation mark fish in the first quest, I recommend using a 20 second timer and surface slap the claw boys. Ignore the papira in the first 10 seconds. This way the claw boys are away and anything after 12 seconds is guaranteed to be the spangled piraruchu. Once you catch a spangled piraruchu, use identical cast and prize catch to ensure the next fish is your mark as well as max collectability. Once you have all 160 items, unequip the tool and turn in the quest. Grats on your new rod. I had a lot of fun getting these new tools. I can't wait to finish the crafter's tools. I've already finished the blacksmith's tool. Altogether, I would say this took a total of 12 hours to complete um, all three tools. If I weren't writing a script and recording gameplay, I think I could have had them all done in the first day. So which tool looks the best? Personally, I like the stone axe look for botanist. What tool did you or are you getting first? Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a safe journey.